Okay, so this morning we're going to continue our discussion of Shobo Genzo Makahanya Haramitsu. And um, we haven't talked uh, about a lot of it yet. We're on the line. Actually, another thing <laughs> that we could do would, it, to, to put into the chat uh, would be that this copy of the text, possibly. It's, is, is that doable? Uh, it's pretty short. So I think at the beginning of this, I made it available to everyone or emailed it to you or whatever. Um, but it's good to, you know, of course, have the text in front of you to study uh, while we're talking about it. Um, so here we're on the line that says, um, uh, let me just briefly, I'll say this is for those of you who may not be familiar with the text. This is the second chapter of Shobo Genzo and it's, uh, Dogen Zenji making it the second chapter clearly um, considered it very important. In fact, it was the first chapter of Shobo Genzo that he actually wrote. And first chapter being uh, Genjo Koan. And these two chapters are uh, really related, you know, highly related. So we'll um, probably study Genjo Koan too at some point, but uh, this is a good um, foundational text for that. And of course, this also relates to the Heart Sutra. This is Dogen Zenji's kind of commentary on the Heart Sutra. So we studied uh, Heart Sutra a few years ago online and those talks are actually posted if anybody's interested in viewing those. Okay, so we're at the line that says Clear seeing is itself prajna paramita. To unfold and manifest this essential truth, the Heart Sutra states that form is emptiness and emptiness is form. Form is nothing but form. Emptiness is nothing but emptiness. 100 blades of grass, 10,000 things. So, um, probably we will just <laughs> talk about part of this. I don't want to talk about too much. Last time we talked about clear seeing and I want to talk about that a little bit more and perhaps a little bit of the next lines too. But we talked about it last time. It's uh, this word shoken in Japanese and uh, it's a very interesting and important word in uh, Dogen Zenji's teaching. So, you know, just briefly, we talked about it uh, being, you know, meaning illumination, uh, seeing, or actually seeing and illuminating. In Dogen Zenji's teaching, this uh, means illuminating the self or illuminating all dharmas in our practice, clear seeing, prajna paramita. Uh, we talked about the relationship between this word and some other words, uh, especially, you know, Wanshi Shogaku's silent illumination, which is um, uh, mu uh, Mukoshu, uh, Mukoshu uh, Zen, or clear uh, silent illumination Zen. And that character is especially uh, important because it has this uh, character for both uh, the illumination, the, the bright, the relative truth, and the dark. The silent character also has the connotation of darkness. And so his, that term is uh, really highly related to Dogen Zenji's teaching and Zen teaching. You know, in general, because in our Zazen practice, in this Prajna Paramita, this highest wisdom is actually the reality of unity and, uh, and uh, individuality as one or beyond one and two. And that in our Zazen practice is the reality that we realize. 
So we talked about that and we related it also to this term that Dogen Zenji uses in Fukan Zazengi, which is Eko Hensho, or uh, turning the light inward to illuminate the self. So that's the same show. All of these uh, words contain this word show, um, or this word that means, you know, illumination or light or seeing. So I, I was rereading uh, Ucha Maroshi's commentary on this uh, Shogo Genzo chapter, and he said something really interesting that I, I didn't catch the first time or I forgot about the, the first time when I read it. And he um, relates this uh, clear seeing to Avalokiteshvara, this Khan and Ken are the same character. So uh, Avalokiteshvara is, of course, the clear seeing. We talked about this in the first the first or second talk. So this clear seeing, the Bodhisattva of compassion, is this uh, Shokin as well. So, we, you know, we talked about the fact that this Buddha or this Bodhisattva uh, is our practice and it arises you know, the Heart Sutra says that um, all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are, depend on Prajnaparamita, but also we can read that character as arise from Prajnaparamita. So the Buddha um, called Gyobutsu or Avalokiteshvara or, you know, these five skandhas when practicing Prajnaparamita give birth to a Buddha. You know, this isn't some kind of, you know, strange, uh, otherworldly teaching. It means that we, you know, realize this uh, Bodhisattva ideal or this um, Buddha idea, ideal with all beings in the universe when we practice. Because, you know, as we often talk about, we let go of our separation, our conceptual separation or our um, five skandhas, we, we let go of the clinging to these five skandhas as real, as me, an individual, and separate. Uh, you know, me as a subject and those things in the universe as an object. That's the kind of primary source of our delusion, of course. And so in Zazen, we open the hand, and uh, Dogen Zenji called that, you know, dropping off body and mind and uh, Ichamaroshi came up with his own um, you know, term for that. Uh, opening the hand of thought is the way we translate it in English, but it was really interesting to me that he made that connection to Avalokiteshvara, the same Khan, uh, and he also related this to the word Shikan. It's not the same Shikan as Shikantaza, but um, this is shikan, as in uh, maka shikan. The, you know, a very important text in the Zen lineage was written by um, an ancient Tendai ancestor in China, and it's called you know maka shikan. And this shikan is um, you know, had this text had a huge influence on all uh, Japanese Buddhism, and much Buddhism, you know, in China. And the Shikan is Shamatha and Vipassana. So she, uh, it's the literal kind of translation is stopping and seeing. So, you know, this Shamatha and Vipassana is uh, a very, of course, early teaching of the Buddha. And it's quite popular now, quite well known, you know, there's the Vipassana movement and there's a lot of talk about this Shamatha and Vipassana practice. And apparently in the early texts, it's not really spoken of that much, but, um, but we, we think of it as a kind of foundational teaching of the Buddha. And, you know, nowadays, apparently it's kind of presented as two separate practices. So the stopping is a kind of, um, 
you know, stopping the thinking or concentrated effort to um, stop the process of the eye making. And then um, the insight practice is like, uh, you know, studying the emptiness of things, especially the self, the emptiness of the self and all phenomena as an object of the self, you know. And so I think today it's sort of uh, presented as two, a kind of two pronged, you know, practice. But actually, I read some things by Tsanisaro Bhikkhu who said that actually um, this was presented as one practice, you know, in the early text. And it looks differently than the, different than what we, you know, see in Zen. Um, so it's not, of course, the same practice but uh, we th I mean <laughs> not the way it's presented in some of these texts anyway um, but it was interesting that it originated as one practice so the concentration or the uh, you know the meditation practice and the insight practice are considered as one you know one practice and so Uchamaroshi um, connected this Shikan you know, with Zazen, uh, and that's basically a very deep and foundational connection to, to, our, to our Zazen practice. So, uh, uh, Vipassana can be translated as something like, um, you know, clear seeing. That's one of the ways that it's translated. So, let's see, Dakota, did you have a, a question or a comment? Yes, thank you very much, Sensei. I was just going to ask really quick if you knew if there was a, uh, because this Makashikan seems to be like the, the Japanese expoundation of the uh, Shamatha Vipassana practice. Is Makashikan like the Japanese response to the Satipatthana Sutta? Was that like the Japanese translation of the Satipatthana Sutta, which as far as I know, originally expounded uh, the, the Shamatha Vipassana practice? Do you know about about that? Yeah, uh, th this text, this particular, I don't know about the translation of that particular text, and, but and uh, it's it's not actually what this refers to. This is um, or the way that it comes to us in Zen, or the the way that we refer to it, uh, comes through this text of um, Chi E. Uh, it's a t he's a Tendai uh, master who lived, um, I think, maybe the 11th century or 10th century, I think. Um, but I can't remember his name in, uh, in, in Chinese. Uh, none of these words in Chinese I can pronounce, or my teacher never tried either. <laughs> so it was usually in um you know japanese that we talked about them but you could google it and it would come up in in japanese uh, i mean in, in chinese too so uh he wrote this kind of you know seminal uh, meditation manual called makashikan and he took in all of these elements of the early text so i'm yes i'm sure that that sutra and all the information available to him influenced this text but uh, it, it's a, like a five volume um, text, you know, it's a big long text that influenced, you know, all of Tendai Buddhism and Zen and, you know, it's a very sort of deep and complicated text apparently. Uh, but this isn't really the um, way that we use this word, you know, Shikan or in Zen. Uh, necessarily um, well I mean I shouldn't say that the way we interpret the meaning of, of Samatha and Vipassana is you know a bit different so this Uchamaroshi uh, it's l let me make sure uh, did that answer your question Dakota It did. It did. And I, I appreciate it. Um, I was, I was, 
I guess I was under the assumption at first that it was kind of like a direct translation of the Satipatthana Sutta, but from what you're explaining, there's a lot more that went into it than just that. So that's that's interesting. Uh, uh, just as a side note, very quickly, do you have a do you have a um, a reference, a personal reference for where you would a, a particular translation of the Makashikan that you would suggest? Yeah, I I don't really I haven't read it all. I don't think it's all translated into English actually there's one uh, piece that I, I mean I have actually if you email me I have a piece of it that um, I could email to you and I can't remember where I got it but that's the only translation that I know of so <laughs> I'll, there's just so much there you know that hasn't been translated into English uh, in you know from the Japanese text and from the you know the Chinese text so I could send you what I have if you remind me you know about that okay. All right. and let's see Slav had something uh, yes it's uh, a little bit comments for Dakota question first of all it's uh, Mahashikan it's a uh, main practice for Tendai uh, Buddhism and it's kind of like a variable uh, Shall we explain? And also, if you're interested, on Amazon they have a book about uh, probably Shikan uh, meditation, or maybe it's going to be. Uh, I, I never read this book. I just saw uh, recently. It's maybe going to be a reference to Maha Shikan uh, Sutra. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um... If you like to, maybe we could put it that into the chat too, either next week or if you have like a, a link to the book. So it's a book that talks about Tendai practice of Makashikan. Okay, cool. Yeah, that'd be great. So um, Uchamaroshi though uh, talked about this Shikan as our Zazen. So the stopping is, uh, in my understanding, the stopping is the stopping of this. So it's not the stopping of thinking. To me, it's a you know it's kind of a important distinction because this maka shikan. Uh, <laughs> I didn't expect. I didn't want to go into this actually, but um, the practice described I think in that Makashikan is something like ocean seal samadhi and that means um, I've talked about this before that this reality is like an ocean a vast ocean and of course of unity and the waves of delusion arise uh, because of the wind of ignorance so we are kind of like waves that arise on this vast ocean of emptiness. And so uh, Chi'i's practice is, my understanding is that we calm, you know, we calm this ocean so that it becomes calm and tranquil and our life becomes peaceful and we realize our connection and our, the emptiness of this self. But this is, um, quite different than Dogen Zenji's teaching. So, you know, Dogen Zenji's teaching, the, those waves on the ocean uh, are also an expression of emptiness, an expression of, tr of true reality. So we don't try to calm those waves. You know, without those waves, we cannot uh, have bodhisattva practice. We have to use this, these five skandhas in our thinking in order to make an offering to others. And so in a way, we kind of, uh, I talk about this pretty often, we, <laughs> we embrace our delusion and we, it's all about our connection, you know, to this delusion as to whether we grasp it as me or we practice with it as Buddha. And so, uh, Dogen Zenji had a chapter of Shobogenzo, I think, called Ocean Seal Samadhi, where he talks, you know, he talks about this. 
and um, th so we don't try to stop those waves or that thinking you know, in our zazen practice, uh, in shikantaza, we allow all of those waves to come up, and we don't make some effort to focus or concentrate or shut the mind down. And that, as I said, is because that is part of Buddha. You know, that comes from Indra's net. That is Avalokiteshvara. Uh, Mara is really <laughs> that our, our, you know, grasping. Mara is actually. Buddha too, depending on how we embrace, you know, these five skandhas. Usually we think of Mara or, uh, you know, evil in Buddhism, you know, evil is something that causes suffering. It's not a demon really, or some kind of force that can't, you know, that is fundamental to the universe. It just means uh, suffering, things that cause suffering. So it's a relative term. You know, something in one situation can be Mara, and in another situation it can be Buddha. And that's kind of the difference to me um, in Buddhism and some other, you know, traditions that say there's some kind of fundamental difference, uh, two, you know, two forces that, you know, good and evil, <laughs> and we need to vanquish evil and promote good, uh, which is, you know, it, it's not a bad teaching, but this has something to do with why Dogen Zenji did not like this idea that of uh, Makashikan as ocean seal samadhi that calmed the waves, you know. Uh, that's because there's no fundamental difference, uh, you know, that we can say evil exists as. So if we do that, we, um, you know, we can have a problem. Uh, but we have a problem if we say everything is Buddha too, you know, we, so he's not saying that, uh, that if everything is accepted and anything goes and it's kind of, a, um, a very important point because this, uh, fascicle of Shobogenzo could be interpreted that way by some, by some people and, especially as a you know compared to the the heart sutra so but we'll you know we'll talk more about that um and let's see uh we'll talk about that eventually so mara exists within wrong views yeah in a sense yes i mean uh our view is is um you know very much a part of Mara or you know the most fundamental wrong view is the view of the separate self and there are several you know several kinds of wrong views in Buddhism and traditional Buddhism but the most usually that we think of the most essential one is the view or the investment in this um, self as separate you know it's rooted in ignorance but ignorance goes much deeper than just here. You know, ignorance is deep in our body, actually, too. <laughs> I was just thinking of this uh, earlier that, let's see, I'm trying to see how I can get the, the chat off. Um, oh, well. Uh, you know, sometimes we think of a situation or something happens to us and we know that we're somehow clinging or we're self-defensive or we're promoting a wrong view you know within ourselves like somebody says something to us and we know that it's empty or we know that it's uh not really about us and them or this particular person that needs to be defend our territory yet the body something in the body won't let go <laughs> We can't keep quit thinking about it, and uh, we can't, we just can't let it go, you know, sometimes. And so it's very important for us to investigate these kinds of, all these different aspects of the five skandhas that go into this wrong view and are clinging to these five skandhas. Um,
there we go. Uh, so, so Ucha Maroshi said, yeah, this, uh, she is stopping, I think he said, he, this is stopping this, you know, it's not stopping the waves, but stopping the uh, grasping, uh, which is, you know, a wrong view, and also um, something beyond our mind and our, it includes our body and, and mind. We grasp these five skandhas. So, and then he says, you know, the wisdom, the shamatha arises in our life by seeing that these thoughts are just secretions of the, the mind. You know, we actually, in, under, in other words, we see the emptiness of these thoughts because um, when we set a, settle down a little bit and we're not just dragged around by these thoughts, you know, we have one thought about ourselves and we grasp onto that, oh, I'm a great person, I'm smarter than these people, and then we have an experience where we feel embarrassed publicly and we might say, oh, I'm dumb, I'm not, <laughs> I'm ashamed, I'm no good, you know, then we run after that one. And uh, we fail to notice the often that just, you know, moments ago we were thinking uh, in an arrogant way and then now we're thinking in a self-deprecating way and we're just kind of um, thrown to the waves, you know, without any direction. But uh, through this kind of zazen practice over time, when we don't identify, you know, with, the, with this thinking, we see that, oh, okay, I can't really trust this thought that I'm better than others. <laughs> I can't really trust this thought that I'm no good. And actually the Buddha said, I can't trust this thought that I'm equal to others. And that's my favorite one when he says that. I mean, he says that early, you know, very early uh, texts. Because usually we like, you know, in America especially, we base our kind of philosophy on all people are created equal, you know, which is not bad, of course. But I think this means we don't think of ourselves as equal. We don't think of ourselves as other. We don't think of others as the object of this self. You know, so we don't say that we're even equal. <laughs> and this is what Dogen Zenji meant when he says, you know, turn the light around and illuminate the self to see everything we encounter as self. And, um, you know, um, practice with all things as self. We, we talk about this you know, often we don't make, we don't invest in the reality of this subject-object relationship. So when we don't invest in that, wisdom, you know, rises in our, uh, in our life. And we have more of an ability to clearly see uh, things that are revealing the Dharma in front of us all the time, you know. Um, thank you, Slav. So that uh, link is in the chat for the book. Thank you. Uh, so this uh, for Uchamaroshi was the way he talked about uh, shikan, shikan, stopping and seeing. So stopping the grasping and having and seeing, having insight into. The nature of self and object and actually on another level a sort of deeper level uh, Dogen Zenji talks about this uh, shikan I think or in his teaching overall is that you know and this is something I mention often too um, reality uh, zazen is insight you know reality it, there's uh, the reality itself, you can't get any more wise than the reality itself. So, <laughs> you know, the thing in itself, like if we're uh, talking about the wisdom of living, you know, a human life and in accordance with reality, there's nothing more wise than the reality itself that includes our life. So it's not 
that's why it's very important to see you know, our zazen practice not as a thing that we do in order to learn you know about life but it is the wisdom of life manifesting here and now in this moment uh, in these five with these five skandhas along with um, all other things uh, in the universe so uh, it's another reason that Dogen Zenji says here clear seeing is itself is prajna paramita and clear seeing is our zazen and prajna paramita is our zazen so it, we, we can't create a differenti differentiation between the person doing zazen the zazen happening and the reality that we awaken to during zazen and later in this text or just in the next line which i'm not sure i'll really talk about that is why he says form is just form and emptiness is just emptiness you know because we don't uh it the things in themselves uh that are the reality and we don't need a bridge called zazen to get to that reality you know um, so let's see see if there's anything else I wanted to make sure that I said uh, about this um, Do I want to talk about this next part or not? Probably not. Uh, I'll talk about it next time. I think that's enough for today. But I just will say that um, the next part is really interesting because um, he says, to unfold and manifest this essential truth, that clear seeing is Prajnaparamita. That's the essential truth. The Heart Sutra states that form is emptiness, emptiness is form so um, to unfold and manifest this is a uh, genjo the same genjo as in genjo koan so uh, something to think about for next week <laughs> but this as i said is very it's very highly uh, connected to genjo koan but this is the same word you know genjo which is a very important word for Dogen Zenji. Uh, my teacher's book says that he uses it over 300 times in Shobo Genzo, this Genjo. Um, so we'll talk about that next time, I think. It's too much for today, I think. Uh, okay, uh, so yes, this is actually a time when we would see if anyone has comments or questions and uh, I see that that Slav has a, a comment or a question uh, it's probably a question so basically uh, what I gonna intake from your uh, teaching today Shurusan, uh the Zen is not learning about life the Zen is, is life if a short summarization of everything what you say it's correct or i confuse myself well i think from a certain perspective that is absolutely true uh and and so that's the perspective that we usually need to to hear but i think also uh, zazen is learning about life too but it's learning about life being guided by this reality that is the ultimate reality so um yes absolutely it's the most important thing i think for us to understand is that uh you know zazen is manifesting this reality and yet we need to study this these five skandhas in order to practice zazen <laughs> you know to better uh create a situation where we can allow Zazen to manifest in our life and uh, where we can allow it to uh, 
manifest in our relationships in and we can arrange our life so that we can sit zazen so we dogen zenji you know has this kind of two uh two kind of perspectives that he often talks about and uh and it's really it's the sudden and the gradual perspective you know in one or beyond one and two you know this usually we, in chinese buddhism they became this teaching of you know they didn't really like i think chinese people didn't like the idea that you had to wait many many lifetimes in order to awaken <laughs> you know, the gradual teaching. And so uh, an emphasis arose on this uh, sudden enlightenment or awakening experience where one leap and we become Buddha. You know, it's kind of the, one of the famous ways of talking about it. And Dogen Zenji, in some sense, is saying that, that is our Zazen. We sit down, Buddha is manifest complete awakening is manifest and yet um, in our daily life uh, we need to keep walking we need to come back to that point we, that point doesn't just uh, dwell in this in these five skandhas forever because we actualize it once and so uh, the other part is we need to keep studying investigating this reality and these five skandhas and walking towards this sazen um, to realize it in the moment you know in each moment so I, I think your what you said is is true is true and we always we always uh, include the the kind of the other side as well in our practice So Lacey had something? Yeah, real quick. Um, I, I just uh, watched this um, silly TikTok video last night, but I did learn a new word and I thought it was really interesting. Um, but apparently there is also a English word uh, that comprises both good and bad. Uh, it's an adjective and it's uh, agathocacological. <laughs> So I just, <laughs> I thought that was a uh, timely that I saw that last night <laughs> and that's what you're talking about today. Hmm. Hmm. Is anyone else familiar with that term? No. Okay. <laughs> Can anyone else say that term? Does anybody know, have any idea how to pronounce it? <laughs> I attempted to Google it. I that's the cacological, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you going to put in chat pronunciation? <laughs> put a little video in there of how to say it. I think I just prefer Zen. Uh, I think that's uh, easier pronunciation. So I don't really know the meaning of that word, but uh, I think just Zen, uh, I think that's easier for me to pronounce. <laughs> I do have another question. Um, I was trying to follow along and I've started trying to just type in instead of writing things down because I'm faster that way. <laughs> but at one point um, you said, Uchiyama said this she is stopping this grasping motion and I couldn't tell if you were saying she in like she can or if, okay, or if you had like stopped what you were saying and went on to say something else. Is that 
Yeah, that's a character. That's one of the first character of Shikan. So it, an English translation, a literal translation is like stopping. Uh, or, you know, it can mean actual, you know, concentration or meditation or, uh, a, you know, a specific kind of Buddhist um, meditation, but just a direct kind of literal translation is stopping. And so, yeah, it's interesting that usually we think that means stopping thinking, but this is a really important part of uh, Dogen Zenji's teaching that we need thinking uh, in order to be a bodhisattva and thinking, you know, is Buddha, it, it, depending on our relationship with it. So it's, he, um, you know, he doesn't, I think it's important to, to say, um, you know, Dogen Zenji often, to me, he, he takes some uh, traditional teaching and he seems to like uh, negate them. And so I don't really think he's really negating these uh, earlier teachings as much as, uh, you know, adding his uh, perspective or his way of trying to get us to see the the reality so we we have all of these different ways to speak about um, you know this unspeakable reality and I think sometimes every once in a while he does say this is wrong a wrong view <laughs> you know he just says this is uh, like in Ben Doha, this is the deluded view of Seneca you know <laughs> something like that so every once in a while he just says, that's outright wrong. But um, also I think, uh, you know, he realized, or my guess is that he realized that there are many, many, you know, un innumerable human beings and innumerable ways to talk about this, you know, reality. So we don't have to think about him as sort of uh, negating the earlier ancestors as much, it, in my opinion. Is there anything else today that we wanted to bring up? Oh, Russ, Russ had something? Thank you, Julia. This is actually kind of a comment slash question. The Chi Yi's view of common ocean, that ocean feels the body to become strength. I had an opportunity, several, my wife's, I'm not sure the number of great, but three things great about it. My wife's great, 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 something like that, grandfather, was um, a woman out of New England who did uh, in the South Pacific. And, and um, uh, it's uh, among his um, his offspring, uh, which includes me as an in-law, uh, there's always this issue of, of trying to find out what really happened to him out there. So I've, I've done, I did a lot of for a while, reading of, of whaling journals or uh, of, of whaling stories, and and actually the worst thing, um, if we think about this thing about about an absolutely calm ocean, you know, we think about well, the 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 storms or or were terrible, um, all of all of the things that could befall them, but actually the thing they feared the most was calm, absolutely be calming. Uh, if the water was as still as glass and there was no wind uh you were you went nowhere you know for days for weeks and, uh, I, 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 it sort of has a connection to me here that you know we really if the ocean is totally calm we we can't go anywhere we, we just you know but I, I also start i've been thinking about this lately and here's here's the question um it seems to me, you know, the waves are, are, are 
pretty clear uh, in our zazen the, the way the waves are our thought, and and you know whether we reject them or whether we accept them. And in, in our zazen, we sort of accept that they're there. But off our cushion, it seems to me the waves are the way we think about ourselves. So the things that we like or dislike about ourselves, our personality, you know, the things that we think. Oh, I need to change this, or I need to change that, or I did that right, or I did that wrong. And um, uh, what we have kind of, we end up then with the same kind of um, uh, perspective or, or, or our position towards our our, our beliefs about ourselves or our beliefs about what we're doing in our life um, as we would about our thoughts in Zazen. So in other words, rather than, rather than, than um, rather than judging those as, oh my God, I need to change that. Or I need to become a better human being or um, much more like, well, this is, these are waves. These are the waves. These waves make me who I am. Um, they, they, they can cause, they can cause trouble, but they are also things that move my life forward, uh, in some sense and make me unique. And so that, um, when we walk the cushion, um, are we trying to find a way of being more accepting of, of the waves in our life? Uh, in the same way that we're more accepting of our thoughts as they come and go during, during while we're actually seeing Zaza? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Uh, we, you know, we, it's difficult to understand, but we're, we're practicing with those waves, the kind of understanding or faith that those you know, for lack of a better word, but faith is a little, this is something we can see, you know, in our daily life. So we don't have to believe in something we don't, we can't see. But, um, so we have the kind of understanding that those waves, yes, are, are uh, the part of this deep reality of Buddha or unity or whatever we want to say. And so we, it's a kind of radical acceptance, and this is very difficult, actually. And it's to me, it's part of the way where we've, uh, like, kind of traditional um, psychotherapy that's based on building one's self esteem and ego, which is a good thing that we do in order to serve the Dharma. You know, we want to be able to be upright in society and uh, skillful in order to. Uh, you know, manifest the Dharma, yet um, in, if that's the only purpose, we uh, are limited in our ability to practice, I think, truly with our delusions and with our own, the forgiveness of ourselves, you know, because um, the only, you know, for some things, for example, there's no forgiveness for in human society. And yet, Zazen will forgive us, you know, or Avalokiteshvara uh, will forgive us. In other words, this present moment um, where we're free from thinking of the past and, you know, cl clinging to the future can cleanse us. Uh, but society you know may not be able to do that or we may not you know if we we do certain things in society where we cannot be cleansed you know in that from that perspective so so anyway that's a little off topic but it's a radical acceptance of every part of our delusion and we honor those things and uh we accept them and we practice with them you know the and the way you know this uh, piece says Later, Dogen Zenji says, "How do we honor this, you know, Prajnaparamita? We, how do we protect and preserve this ocean?" And uh, Dogen Zenji says, "We do it as empty space. 
you know, we protect and preserve these five skandhas and honor it as uh, understanding that it's empty space and, and part of this, you know, great, you know, great ocean. Uh, so, so yes, um, your earlier comment about being able to go somewhere is important because uh, we talk about this often, the kind of Zen sickness of, you know, it's a classic thing where we get con uh, stuck in emptiness and we think that we can do whatever we want because nothing matters and it's all one. And so um, that's a pretty radical thing that probably not many people actually do consciously, but but we I think more so we get uh, complacent or we get lazy um, if we think, you know, in some way, well, there's no nobody out there really judging us and um, you know there's no standard to set to live up to on some level or you know we have these kind of deluded ideas of what emptiness is and in complete unity that's true there's no way to distinguish anything and so there's no way to see or do anything and so we can get lazy and kind of uh, you know um, forget our vow if we I think this is more likely of what we do rather than kind of become amoral and <laughs> you know a, like a sociopath or something um, but so that you know that's very important that we have to see these waves and this differentiation between them in order to do uh, bodhisattva work and a good metaphor may be like, um, you know, maybe surfing these waves and, and we have a vessel that we, I don't know, every metaphor breaks down at some point, but we have a vessel, these five skandhas that uh, we use to navigate uh, the waves. We can't control the waves, make them go, you know, where we want them to go, yet we can um, surf them and use their energy in in order to make you know an offering so it might be a kind of way of thinking about it but it's true it's um we we don't want to come to some point and say well i'm bad or i you know i have these tendencies which are no good uh and um i can't i can't succumb uh, surmount them you know something like that we if we're not careful, we, we fall into these kinds of um, places where we get stuck. So we always honor things as if they're empty space. We do, you know, we say that there are separate beings in order to um, manifest compassion and honor and protect this empty space. So that's kind of why, um, you know, this piece is sort of devotional or to me um, as opposed to the Heart Sutra which to me actually is too uh, you know but uh, Dogen Zenji you know takes this kind of other way of expressing it And I should have said, I wanted to say too that, uh, it's, yeah, Zen surfing, that's right. I was telling Russ that I was almost, uh, lit, grew up in Santa Barbara because of some s strange twist in my youth, you know, uh, I ended up in Texas rather than Santa Barbara and it could have very well been, you know, surfing that I would be talking about right now. <laughs> But we, we stayed at Russ's uh, house last weekend. He's very generous in opening up his home to Ryushin and I. And uh, so we were there in Bloomington last week. And um, I hope Russ is feeling better. We're all doing fine. He, <laughs> good. He came down with a virus and uh, we, we were, were all fine. So...
Okay, um, anything else today that we want to talk about before signing off? Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and enjoy your weekend.